what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here so this will be the spoiler free review of monarch legacy of monsters episodes 6 through 10 which i think apple is airing these episodes weekly because they've just sent us the entire season at once but i think this season is supposed to end on january 12th if i'm not mistaken but yeah we'll be continuing the review of the show that i started like a month or two ago at this point with episodes one through five again talk about episodes six through ten i'll go over the plot of the show really quick again and the cast and that's really it. we're not going to recap or do any of that stuff if you want to check out my first half of my review for the show i'll leave a link to it in the description but in 2015, one year after the reemergence of Godzilla, half siblings Kate and Kentaro Randa investigate their missing father Hiroshi's connection to Monarch, the, co the covert operation monitoring giant monsters known as Titans. Two generations earlier, Bill Randa and Kiko, Mor Kiko Moria or Moria are scientists involved with the early development of Monarch. Former Army officer Lee Shaw becomes a close ally to the R Randa family across both time periods. This series is starring Anna Sawai, Kiersey Clemens. Uh, Wyatt Russell and Kurt Russell, Joe Tippett and Eliza Losowski. So, Monarch Legacy of Monsters, the second half, is more of the same, and I would say it's still a good show overall. A deep dive into Monarch. Our Titans are here. You have a looming threat that could outdo G Day, as the narrative will have you to believe. And Kentaro, May, Kate, and Lee Shaw are still hunting to find Kate and Kentaro's dad, Hiroshi who they believe to be alive after he disappeared following the events of G-Day. Now, the narrative balance between the 1950s and 2015 still allows us to get to know Hiroshi, who, again, is their father, his relationship with Monarch, and the ongoing legacy with this family that he has, or the ongoing legacy that this family has with the establishment known as Monarch. Motivation for certain characters are starting to become more clear, with one turning out to be a completely different person from what was initially presented to us. This really struck a nerve too when it happened because Monarch has done such a great job making the humans compelling and worth investing in as opposed to the general consensus that surrounds the current MonsterVerse films and their handling of humans and the lack of care that I have every time I revisit those movies. The love history between Kentaro and May that I still feel got way too much attention in the first half is thankfully dropped in favor of a more intriguing subplot for May. A subplot that explains why she's in Japan and her complicated tech background. Digging into the more interesting aspects of May was the right choice because the love drama just was not cutting it. Yes, I understand it was there to explain her history with Kate's brother, but it overstayed its welcome is all I'm getting at. The dynamic between Kate and Kentaro remains believable as a pair of siblings who are slowly developing love for one another after not knowing who each other were for several years thanks to their, thanks to their father and his secrets. Um, with so much already known about the MonsterVerse, what I do have to say about Monarch Legacy of Monsters is that it continues to keep its narrative engaging beyond just our characters, even if it's treading on details we already know about. All of the second half, all of the second half events build up to this generational encounter where you have the past and present reuniting. Take from that what you will. I'm trying to again keep it as spoiler free as I can. In other words, though, they still did not deliver on the Titan mayhem some of you might be growing frustrated with and doubled down even more so on the human drama. Granted, a very compelling human drama. Also, again, I recognize that some people just are not liking what they're doing with the humans, but in comparison to what they've been doing with these MonsterVerse films, this is the best set of human characters that we've had so far in this cinematic universe. However, the inevitable mini brawl that occurs in the finale is a satisfying moment if you felt deprived of the Titan brawls during this show. Now, I do say mini because this happened for maybe a minute or a little slightly under a minute, and it was a refreshing thing to see. It felt like a finally moment when we saw two creatures battling. I'm not going to say who was involved in the brawl. You can take your guess as to who one of them were. Not too shocking. <laughs> But the season did conclude on a very humongous cliffhanger, so I remain hopeful that season two does slightly dial back the human drama just a tad bit and put in more Titan action, if the budget allows, of course. The visual effects I thought were still solid enough. Godzilla looks fine, as did a surprise guest. Anna Sawai and the entire cast continue to do a great job with their performances, but Kurt Russell, I would say, still remains the series highlight. Actually, 
Greenwood's hobbies performance in the first half of this show, I would say is better than these last five episodes. He has some moments where I can argue that he's doing a fine job, but I would say he's not doing as good as everyone else. He is the weak link. And I don't mean that in any sort of type of attack towards him. I just think that what he was doing in the first half of the show definitely was a better performance from him as opposed to what I see in this second half. Still, the direction overall, I would say, is good. And I didn't take issue with the pacing either. When the story wants to build tension, it works. And when it's going for a more emotional moment, it hits even harder thanks to the character work. None of which linger for too long on your screen. All in all, Monarch Legacy of Monsters, I would give this a show a 7 out of 10. I think the last time during my first half of the review for episodes 1 through 5, I gave that a 6 or 6.5. With everything that they've done with these last 6 or last 5 episodes, I'd say the show is a solid 7. It's a solid show, digs deeper into Monarch and what we already know about it while also keeping you on your toes, keeping the story engaging with some very nice visuals good uh, visual effects when it comes to our titans and their on-screen presence good recreation of godzilla especially after g-day and the performances are not bad for the most part uh, again solid direction great pacing give it a 7 out of 10. i would only just really try to find a balance between the human drama and your uh titan action that i know many people would love to see more of but i know it might just be a budget restriction thing let me know what y'all think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.